If you walk into this park, you just might miss it. But if you know what happened here, you will remember. On May 21st, 1976, a school bus carrying 52 passengers was on its way to Miramonte High School from Yuba City High School. The drive was scheduled for just over two hours, but unfortunately, it did not end that way. The bus, a 1950 Crown Supercoach, was unfamiliar to the driver, who was working for student transportation lines in nearby Marysville, California. Noticing that the bus was giving him a warning for what he thought was low engine oil pressure, the driver decided to stop in Martinez to get oil. Just before 11 a.m., the driver took exit 56 from I-680, a curved ramp. The bus hit 50 feet of the guardrail, crashed through it, flipping midair while falling over 20 feet before eventually crashing on its roof, sliding approximately 30 feet, crushing the roof all the way to the window line. 29 people died, while the remaining 23 passengers were seriously injured. One eyewitness, who was following directly behind the bus, says that the bus was not speeding and seemed to keep up with traffic. He states that the bus was... It came around the edge and it caught, it caught the rail. Well, when you turn the wheel to get back on, get back halfway on the road, it caught, looked to me like it caught the rail and went over. For hours, first responders saved those still alive. They attempted to cut through the bus, but this brought little success. Cranes were brought in to lift the bus in order to help extract victims still stuck inside of the bus. A local priest described the scene as a battlefield. News spread to the school and the parents, all of whom were devastated. The California State Assembly adjourned for the day after hearing the tragic news, and the mayor of Martinez described what he saw as a mess. So, what caused this? Reported by the San Francisco Chronicle, highway patrolmen could not find any skid marks on the highway, and the visual inspection at the scene of the accident showed no mechanical issues. According to the California Highway Patrol, the bus had been inspected within 30 days of this trip and was given a safety clearance. It would later be revealed that the bus had never been inspected despite CHP's attempts to. But it turns out, due to the unfamiliarity of the bus to the driver, he had misunderstood the warning that was presented to him. The oil was still in good standing, but it was the low air pressure alarm that triggered this warning. Without air pressure, the air brakes would not be able to function, creating a nearly unstoppable bus. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, this was the main cause of the crash but they provided six factors that led to the severity of it. The first of the six points is the air compressor drive belt failed, the direct cause of the accident. This meant that, quote, air was not replaced in the air brake system as it was used, end quote. Because of the age of the bus, there was only a single air brake system and not the dual air brake system that became standard in 1975. The second point was the lack of a pre-trip inspection in which the driver would have seen the need to replace the faulty belt. NTSB report H77-1719 states that this was not the first time that there was a lack of records from student transportation lines. Two years earlier, in 1974, the California Highway Patrol conducted its annual inspections on the buses, but due to the lack of maintenance records, this resulted in a C rating. This rating meant that there was evidence of widespread non-compliance with or disregard for regulatory requirements. This rating remained in 1975 and 1976, but the company had not provided any way for their passengers of knowing this rating. The other four points have to do with the ramp itself, including how sharp the curve was, the lack of sign to warn drivers of how sharp the ramp was, which was the only point that was marked as urgent to fix, the overall design of the ramp railing, and the weakness of the railing that did not redirect the bus when it was hit. NTSB report H77-1115 states that because of the design of the ramp, the bus was able to climb the parapet, further propelling it, 
over the already weak structure. Despite all of these points, the biggest reason is hidden at the bottom of report H77-1719. It states that the driver had never driven a bus before being hired as a part-time driver about one week before the accident. In addition to this, the driver had only driven three buses in this week, and the emergency brakes were in a different location on those three buses than they were on the bus he was driving on May 21st. Had proper training been given, this could have completely changed the outcome of this day. So, how was this remedied? Each point made by the NTSB was followed up with recommendations to different agencies on how to create a safer environment. The first set of recommendations is towards the Federal Highway Administration, in which they would first recommend creating a document that can be distributed throughout local agencies that would show the proper way to inspect air compressor drive belts the main reason the air brakes failed. Secondly, they recommended a new bridge railing design that would not only meet new state requirements and become the federal standard, but will meet a variety of conditions to keep the bridges operable. In addition to this, crash tests should be performed on these regularly. Finally, the Federal Highway Administration should work with the states in order to determine the proper amount of signage on bridges and other places of potential danger and to establish priority guidelines for improving, through modification or retrofit, the performance of existing traffic barrier rail systems at bridges. Directed towards the California Highway Patrol were three recommendations. First, to create a program that allows potential passengers or consumers a way to know the rating given by CHP. As previously stated, student transportation lines received a C rating from CHP in recent inspections, but Yuba City High School had no way of knowing this rating or its meaning. The second recommendation was to modify their policies for enforcement when a terminal receives two C ratings in a row. Previously, Enforcement would come after the third consecutive C rating, however, CHP never enforced these safety actions against student transportation lines. Finally, each carrier should be held responsible to ensure that all drivers are properly tested and examined to ensure their driving capability, and that drivers are familiar with the vehicles that they are driving. One final recommendation was made from the NTSB to the California Department of Transportation to put a sign near the exit ramp showing the curvature of the ramp and warn drivers to slow down. You can still see these warning signs today. Many advancements were made because of this, making school buses safer today, specifically two points. The first of which had to do with the motor vehicle and school bus safety amendments of 1974, modified in January of 1976 to include a section about rollover safety. This would provide specific details about the amount of force the roof should be able to handle and how to test the roof structure. This was originally set to go into effect on October 26, 1976, but it was modified in August of 1976 after news of the crash hit Congress. The amended section included a point stating that all emergency exits, with the exception of roof exits, should be able to open as necessary both before and after forces applied to the roof. The amendment also includes a figure that was originally supposed to go in the January 1976 edits, showing the school bus body joints in order to create the most amount of strength. These modifications would go into effect on April 1st, 1977. So, what are the lasting effects? On May 28th, one week after the accident, a memorial service took place at Yuba City High School. The mayor encouraged all businesses to close and for local residents to attend. Nearly $10,000 and countless physical donations were raised for the impacted families. The choir from Miramonte High School, where the bus was supposed to go, sang at the service. Although the ramp was fixed after the disaster, 39 years later, in October 2015, 
a new ramp was completed in its place as part of an earthquake retrofit program. The new ramp is longer, giving drivers more time to slow down before making the turn. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Marina Vista Avenue. Turn left onto Marina Vista Avenue. In 2011, a memorial was placed outside of Yuba City High School, nearly 35 years after the accident occurred. But less than five minutes away from where the tragedy happened, another memorial was made, dedicated on the 20th anniversary of the accident. Survivors and family members came together because of their shared pain and remembered the day on which their life changed. The memorial still sits inside this park today, overlooking the Bay of Martinez. The Yuba City bus disaster was the deadliest school bus crash in U.S. history and the second deadliest involving any bus. Lives were lost, scars were created. But we will not forget this tragedy. Through the stories of survivors and memorials created, we will remember. Remember.